Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital, where things are getting rather busy around our hospital these days. If we look down here, we can see that we're now being sent 98 patients every single day, which is very good. And of course, 10 of those patients are arriving via our wonderful fleet of flashy lights, Nino machines. There they are. However, as exciting as that sounds, it is causing us a little bit of a problem. So all of those 10 people that are being rushed into our trauma centre via the flashy lights, Nino machines, are currently all orthopaedics patients because right now that's the only department we have where we've got proper hospitalization up and running. So poor orthopaedics is being swamped with 10 patients every single day and it simply can't cope with that volume of people. So last time we did have to increase the size of the high dependency unit over here in orthopaedics because originally I think that had five beds. I think there were those three there and those two there and there was a wall along there but the demand was so great and we needed so many beds over here that we had to extend the entire ward all the way down to there and add all of those beds in and now all of those beds are full. So it's getting very busy in orthopaedics. So we need another department with hospitalization just to take the pressure off of orthopaedics and it seems that traumatology is the answer. There it is. We need to finish this off. And then half of the people will go into orthopaedics and half of the people will go into traumatology. So the pressure will be taken off orthopaedics a little bit, which could help things out quite a lot, I hope. So I think that's our plan. The only thing is, I think we might need to rejig the layout of this a little bit because right now the high dependency unit over here in traumatology is planned out to be quite small and as we've seen over here we possibly could do with the high dependency unit being a little bit bigger because that one has had to be increased in size quite considerably so I think we do need to do a little bit of rejigging of our plans over here so I think that bit's okay that bit can stay. So we can have a little cleaning cupboard. In fact, that's there, isn't it, already? We can have a break room. We can have the elevator. Then we can have the nurse's station or whatever it is. Which one's which? That's the nurse's station. That's the on-call room. So that's okay. They can stay there. Then we can have the burn unit over here. But then I think what we do is we make maybe the burn unit could be a little bit bigger, possibly. And then we could have ourselves the high dependence unit kind of coming this way and then have the diagnostic unit and cardiography unit sort of over here a little bit. So make use of that space there. I think that's our best course of action right now. So hang on a minute. Let's go and remove the corridor from there because that's okay. Also, we can get rid of that just there as well. That's fine. And then, yes, we need to do some replanning of things. So hang on a minute. So get the corridor and let's have the corridor running all the way along there. So all the way across the back, and that's fine. I quite like that look. You know, nice, you know, easy access to everything. That's quite good. And then I think we run the corridor down like that. We will have a slightly wibbly bit over here, look, because that wasn't the initial plan. So there's going to be something there which is a bit odd. But what we could do is actually, we could just sort of build that into, that could just be a wall, and it could just sort of stick out like that. So that should be fine. So hang on a second. So then get rid of that, get rid of that and then get rid of that as well and then go to the burn unit. Now, how big does it say the burn unit needs to be? Three by three, minimum room size. That's absolutely tiny. And then we can make that a little bit bigger like that. And then maybe we'll have high dependency, um, say, I don't know, that big possibly. And then we could have cardiography being sort of like that possibly. And then we could have the diagnostic unit like that. That could be okay. That might work. We will have a little kind of corner just there. I don't quite know what to do with that. Do you know what we'll do with that? Plants. Lots and lots of plants. That'll be a fun thing. Or, hang on, hang on. Would that be an ideal spot for an elevator? Would an elevator fit into that? It'll stick into the burn room a little bit, but I think that might be quite handy. So we're going to have an elevator there. There's one down here. But one there might actually be quite useful. Another way up to the next floor. That could be very handy indeed. So hang on a second. So they need to be... Hang on, how big are they? Oh, they're four by four. That's the only problem. That's three. Okay, so it might have to... Well, hang on, but if it goes like that, look. If it cuts in like that, it's it's a bit it's a bit of a wibbly thing, isn't it? Hang on, no, but it sticks out to the front a bit, doesn't it? Hang on. So it's going to come out like that. And that bit at the back doesn't stick out quite as far because it has to go into the corridor a little bit. So we could, we could have an elevator just there. That might work out okay. 
that might be quite a handy place to have an elevator. So it's right down the end of that corridor. You can run down here, grab the lift and go up to the next floor. That might be what we do. Okay, hang on a second. So then we need to kind of rejig that a little bit. So that's going to be diagnostic unit and that's going to be high dependency. Okay, I think that's what we do. So let's get that in first, shall we? before I forget and do something silly with it. So hang on a second. So go to build mode. We'll go to here. We'll go and grab some walls, I think. So um, yeah, we'll have that like that. And we'll draw that across like that and down like that. And then we shall... I mean, does it need to be boxed in? Does the elevator need to be boxed in? It's going to be in a slightly weird place. It's kind of not perfect, but I think it's good to have one in. Um, so I think we get rid of that wall there we get rid of that wall there and that's fine that's okay and then can we drop the elevator and then kind of build around it that would make sense so if we could get that in because yeah we do have a great big pile of money now we completed one of our insurance goal things so we can put these in so hang on a minute rotate it round so we want it to go there there we go it's in and they put a wall in that side anyway i think it's already got its own walls built around it which is quite handy there we go so that's slotted in quite nicely, but then we have to do all the stuff over here because it does mess around with the floor and such like, which is a bit of a bother. I don't quite know why it does that. So we'll have that floor there, please. And then we shall have that floor there just to make it look tidy. Um, and then in terms of walls, it's going to look a bit weird on this because it's going to have one wall like that. Hang on, if we pop the walls up. So one wall like that, but the other wall is going to be of the, whatever that is, yeah, the orthopedics wall. So there we go. The lift is okay, it's in, and there we go. We've got an elevator in place. And now we need to spend a little bit of money on foundations for this bit over here, which is unfortunate because foundations are quite expensive, but never mind. So 122 grand we have right now. So I think, can we get that in? This is, oh, it's so expensive. It's so costly building floor, but there we go. There we go. So we're now down to... 112 grand that was that was very expensive that was really expensive also we can put the corridor back in properly now hang on a minute i've not done the corridor very well it's thinking it's two corridors which it clearly doesn't need to be so like that that's all one corridor um and then yeah then it can go like that and it can come round here like that and it can connect up like that there we go so one big corridor sort of looping around like that. That's good. I like that. Hang on, what's that? Does anything own this here? I don't think it does. Do you know what? That can stretch around there as well. That's fine. Okay, so now that's all the kind of corridor sorted out. And now we just need to do a great big building project. I mean, we could be here for a long time putting walls in and floors and everything else. But here we go. So let's sort out. Do you know what? Whilst there are no walls in the way, let's do the floors. Let's get the floors all nice and sorted. So yeah, we want to get the green floors. Hang on, if I have it on the right thing, that would help quite a bit, wouldn't it? So the green floors to go into the corridor. And look at that, it's lovely and calming. It's a nice sort of calm mint green colour to take your mind off the fact that you've been burnt or bitten by a snake, as seems to happen quite a lot. So um, yeah, there we go. That's that sorted. And then we want to get, um, yeah, where's the break room floor? Because we quite like that for that. So we'll keep that consistent. So nice break room just there. Oh, hang on. Another elevator. We'll drop another one of those in. So rotate. Uh, oh, no, press the wrong button to do that one. Not that button. Hang on a minute. Um, so rotate, rotate, rotate. So pop that there. Or do we put it one back? And then we could put some nice sort of flowers or something in front of it. We could put some plants in front of it. That'd be quite exciting. Yeah, okay, so pop the elevator in like that. And then we need to do the flooring again. I don't like the fact it doesn't do floors, but okay, right, so pop the flooring in. And then over here, we've got, what's that? Yeah, right, they're the sort of nurses' stations or whatever they are, and the doctor's stations. So what are they like over here? Because I'd like to keep it at least vaguely consistent. So they've got that, and they're both the same, but we've got the kind of, the nice sort of mint green equivalent oh hang on hang on is that the right type oh no i've done the i've done the wrong floor hang on a minute hang on a minute drop of that but put the right floor in <laughs> it's fine nobody saw that we got away with that one and then it's just the four main rooms okay so the ward 
Uh, hang on, the ward over here. Yes, yeah, so the wards have got that sort of flooring. So we'll go for that for the high dependency bit. So put the flooring in like so. And then we have that over there, the burn unit. Do you know what? The burn unit can have the same type of floor. That's okay. And then these, I think they should have... I mean, what's going to go in these? Hang on, hang on. Can we click to see what's in these? So an examination table, an ECG, medical light, things that look very expensive. Okay, so that's just... Which room is that? A cardiography unit. So the ECG is the important thing, isn't it, with that? So that's just a kind of a glamorous office, I think. So does it need to be that big? And this over here, diagnostic unit. I don't think they need to be that big. I think we could halve the size of those and have something else over here. I mean, is there is there a bathroom over here? There's some bathrooms over there, but there's nothing over here, look. So if you were in this room and you needed the loo, you'd have to go there. But we could, we could put a little sort of toilet block over here. That might be quite helpful. That could be quite useful. Okay, do you know what? That's what we will do. Because I think they're going to be too big otherwise. They're just going to be big, empty rooms with nothing in. So we might as well make use of the space. So get rid of that, get rid of that. Go back to diagnostic unit, but make it half as big. So like, uh, I mean, at least that big. How big do the bathrooms need to be? Hang on a second. They are one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if we go to, yeah, restroom. So one, two, three, four, five. Ah, perfect. So pop a restroom in like that. And then we'll have diagnostic unit and then cardiography unit going up like, oh, hang on, like that. There we go. And round the corner a bit as well. I think that's what we should do. I think that's possibly our best option. Right, okay, and now we need walls. Many, 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 many walls, because of course we've got no walls at all, and we can start taking walls down. That can come down. That's quite exciting. That can come down, because now it's all going to open up. And that one over there, that can also be removed. Okay, and now we can put in all the different walls, uh, the corridor ones, so hang on, let me just go and drag and drop those in, because that might take a little while to get sorted. Okay, there we go, the walls are all in, and of course, because this is an outside wall, we can have windows, we can have lovely, lovely windows, we don't have enough windows, so maybe we'll put a few of the windows with blinds in, because I do quite like those. Because, yeah, if it is too bright, you can then just, you know, turn the blinds and, you know, make it a bit darker and get the light out of your eyes or whatever. So we'll kind of stagger some of those in, like, hang on, what's the gap? One, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, go. And then we'll put some of these in. Hang on, then we'll put some down here as well. Hang on, the gap's, oh, the gap's only three of those ones. Um, Can we, okay, hang on a minute. Abandon, abandon that idea for now. Hang on a second. In the middle, over here, could we put some like fancy glass, like that look, like that, just to make it look a bit different. So, you know, it's not a door. You can't go out that way, but it just lets in a lot of natural light around that area. That does look quite good. I like that. That should be quite good. So, and then we can just fit these things in. So there's a gap of what? Three. So it's every fourth one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hang on, let me go and put windows in because this could take a little while because there might be many windows. So hang on a minute, let me go and drop all these windows in. There we go, all the windows go in. So now let's do the doors. Of course, we have to do some more walls across here, but we'll get to that in a second because they're going to be sort of more interior walls. So let's go and sort out the doors so we can actually get into room. So I think we want restricted area doors for these ones over here. So the little break room, that can have a restricted area door because of course we don't want people wandering into there. And then I think, yeah, we've got the same for the uh, the nurse's office and the doctor's office. But yeah, the nurse's office has got big double doors. What I think we might do is as well, let's not kind of put a wall between these. They can have a nice kind of open office thing going on. So how about we have a double door over there and a double door down here. I like that, so we can get into there. Um, okay, high dependency possibly could do with, yeah, two sets of double doors at either end. That would make sense. Um, and then the white door for these here, because I imagine people are going to go into these. So, oh, oh, what happens with the corridor over here? This is a bit contentious, because this bit of corridor is currently in the same colour for, yeah, the orthopaedics colours, but there's going to be a door over here to go into a traumatology room. Oh, 
Oh dear, there's going to be a bit of a fight there, I imagine. But okay, hang on, we'll have a door there and a door there. That's very good. Um, and then we'll just put a door in the middle and a door in the middle again. That'll do. And then we just need doors into the burn unit. So I think again, let's have um, restricted area double doors because we don't want random people wandering in there. Um, although, it's not biohazard, is it? It's not really a biohazard. I don't think we need those. Double door with windows. I want double doors without windows. Because lots of people in the comments said, stop putting windows in your doors. And I sort of agree. But um, do you know what? Let's have restricted again. We'll have that. We'll have one, um, I don't know, just there. At that side and one in the middle over here, possibly. So one lot there and one lot. Let's put it in the middle as well. There we go. Right, so now all the doors are in, so we can get in and out of these things. Now we just need to go and do all of the different walls and such like, which could take quite a long time. So let me go and put all of the walls in, because that's not overly thrilling, is it? Watching someone drag walls into a place. So let me just go and put all the walls around the place, and then we'll come and populate the rooms with various bits and bobs. And then, oh yeah, we need the floor. Hang on, hang on. We'll do the flooring. Let's do the flooring now, because that is nice and simple. So hang on a minute. It's a bathroom over there. It's just generic tiles on the floor in a bathroom. That's okay. And then, yes, those two kind of examination room type things. I mean, yeah, do we have that checkered floor? Do we just put the checkered floor in and just turn it into that, possibly? Let's have that, shall we? Then that'll look okay. Um, yeah, there we go. Right, so now that's all the flooring in. Just checking, just making sure. Yeah, there we go. Lots of floor. Now I can go and do the walls. Okay, there we go. I think all of the walls are in. We might have missed possibly one at a certain angle or something. I'm not entirely sure, but I think all of those walls are in. Oh, hang on a minute. No, they're not. Hang on. The ones by the side of the lift elevator thing are not in. There we go. All sorted. So I think that will do. That'll do for now. And of course, yeah, we haven't got a dividing wall here because they're going to have a nice big open office, which is very lovely. So let's maybe look at the expensive bit first. So here we go. This is going to be the costly bit, isn't it? The burn unit. That's going to have all sorts of expensive things to deal with burn. So yeah, mechanical ventilators, they're 1600 a piece. So yeah, it's going to cost us a little bit of money to get this in. So how about then we get in, I mean, we've got modern beds providing more comfort for patients. So let's have a row of them across the back there like that. We just put a row of them over there like that. Have we done this? Have we put the doors in the right place for this? Or have we again caused ourselves a little bit of a problem with this? If we had a door, hang on, what's the best way to do this? So that ward there, just thinking of, hang on, where is it? Lost the ward. That ward here eventually is going to have a wall going down the middle sort of, and then we can get stuff across the side and then beds going across that middle bit, and then beds going on the other side of that middle bit, and then beds down that side. So we can fit more in with that. So do we want to do the same here? So I have a wall kind of going like that, and then we can have beds there, beds there, beds there, beds there. Do we just need some doors coming in this side? Maybe we do, or doors that side possibly. Hang on, we're going to change the doors around because that's a little bit silly. So hang on a minute. Um, doors, yeah, remove, remove. To get rid of those, yes, we can't get in. That's fine. We're aware of this game. So if we have, say, doors and doors, and then we have a wall going down the centre, that gives us a bit more of an opportunity to get bed sorted. I think that should be okay. So yeah, if we had a wall, you can't get it exactly in the centre, which is unfortunate, but never mind. Um, so yeah, if we drop uh, that wall and just kind of go like that, we can have beds on that side, beds on that side, beds down there, beds down there, beds across the back. And that might be okay. I mean, do we need that many beds? I've got no idea, but here we go. Let's go and put some in to complete this thing. So modern hospital beds, we'll have one of them. Hang on a minute, rotatey, rotatey. Um, we'll have one of them. Uh, oh, no, I'm on the other side of the wall. <laughs> Botherations, hang on a second. Yeah, drop of that. There we go. Is that all done now? Yes. Okay, right. Back back to the beds. Right, so get a modern hospital bed. One of those, please. And yeah, we're going to put that... And we can't put it right in the corner, but we can put it... Let's, you know what, let's have these ones at the back, actually. Let's put these at the back for now. So they can go across here, look. So it can't go there. So hospital bed in there. Wonderful. But now it needs all sorts of other bits and bobs. So life monitor, life monitor, life monitor. Right, we had an advanced life monitor because they're more expensive, which means they've got to be better. So we put that 
there, right? And then we need a mechanical ventilator. So one is 1600, that one is 2000. So because that's more expensive, it must be better. We only want the best for our patients. So there we go. That is a bed setup. So it doesn't need other bits and bobs. It doesn't need those other things. So, okay, I think, hang on, we can put a bed socket on though. We'll have one of those, because that makes sense. A little light's come on, that's very lovely. Um, yeah, I think that will do. So if we then copy that, still got 92 grand, so we should be okay. So if we then grab a copy of that and then go, okay, we'll have another one of those there and another one of those there. And that means, hang on, why are they blue? Why are they blue? What's the problem? Oh, we haven't picked... Ah, we didn't buy the monitor. Hang on a minute. Advanced life monitor. Hang on. One there and one there. There we go. So three valid beds. Um, I mean, do we want to put a bedside table? I kind of want to put a bedside table or a fancy chair in here. Have we not got a bedside table? No. Oh, okay. You're not allowed bedside tables. You have to use the ventilation machine thingamajig. But um, yeah, a chair would be quite nice. Can we get a green chair? Is that allowed to go underneath there? It looks like it's okay. It's not interfering with the with the machines that go beep and boop. Okay, that's quite good. That's quite good. And then in that corner, we have to have, of course, the all-important potted plant. Let's have that one there. Lovely. Oh, that looks nice. I like that. So that'll do for that room for now. We can always come back and add to that and move things around, but that's okay for now. But yeah, the idea is three beds there, and then we could put some beds along here, and some beds along here. Is that, I mean, have I done that the wrong way round? <laughs> I don't, it'll do for now, it'll do for now, it's all fine. Um, and then let's go and sort out this over here. So we want to get, that's the on-call room. So we want to get, oh, hang on a minute, can we have a green looking desk? There we go. So we want to get a few of these in, so at least two desks, so we can have two people on the day shift and two people on the night shift. And then we want the same over in the nurse's station, like that. But the nurse's station does need other bits and bobs. It needs stretchers and meal trays and such. So how about we put the meal tray... We'll have one of them just there for now. That should be okay. Uh, well, yeah, hang on. We need chairs. We need chairs, chair and chair and chair and chair. And then PCs, of course. Yep, hang on a minute. So I kind of forgot about the important stuff there. PC, 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 PC. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, and then, yes, we're going to need some equipment in here, but stretchers. We're going to need stretchers. Uh, we can't have green. We can have that kind of boring looking grey colour for a stretcher. So why don't we have a stretcher and a stretcher like that? So two of those. I think that room is pretty much done. Hang on. So yeah, we put a printer and a printer on there and a printer and a printer on there. So that room there is now sorted. The on-call room is a valid room. Do you know what it's lacking? It's lacking windows. Hang on a minute. Let's have a couple of windows in this room, shall we? It's quite nice. We'll have one there, and we'll have one there. There you go. Natural light, everybody. How exciting. Uh, we'll have one there, and one there. And then maybe in the middle here, can we have some fancy big windows like that? Yeah, that'll look quite nice. I like that. Right, so that room is done. Although it is a bit boring, but it's finished. I mean, yeah, do you want to give them a radio? Can we give them something else? It's a very drab room over there, isn't it? They need something over here. So how about we give them cabinet with drawers so they can store some important things. So two of those, and then a radio can sit on the top. There you go, you can put the radio on and you can do some, you can listen to your favourite music and such like, you can do some dancing. So there you go, you can have that. And then I want to put something on there. I want to put something on there. Disinfectant tools? That makes sense. So pop that onto there. Okay, so that room's now done. So we can get doctors in there, which is good. And then we need the nurses over here. So they need, yeah, equipment cabinets or mobile equipment cabinets. How about we have... Let's have some on the wall, but high up. And then we can put stuff underneath. And they can have you know, various bits and bobs over here. So how about, yeah, we'll get a cabinet with doors. It's a bit cramped, isn't it, this room? It's a, it's a bit squished, but it'll do. So that like that. And then either side we'll have one with drawers and with drawers. And then at the top, we'll have wall-mounted stuff 
like that. I like that. Um, and there. Oh, hang on. You can change the colour of those. What is it? What? Hang on. What's the what's the difference in colour between that and that? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not convinced there is one. But okay. Apparently you can change the colour of these. I'm not convinced it looks any different. But okay. <laughs> is it different somehow? Are the sides different or something? I don't know. Right. What can we put on here then? So is that room now valid? Yes. Oh no. Wheelchair. Um... Hang on a minute. We'll get. We'll put a white wheelchair in. Uh, we'll put that there and that there. Yeah, it's it's very busy over here. It's a very cramped room, but it'll do just fine. And then we want to get. Oh, hang on. We are lacking a couple of very important things. Uh, a clock and a clock. That's important. We need a bin somewhere. So we need a bin just there, say. And then we need a plant. The plant can go just there. They can have a shared plant. They can look after it and they can call it Colin. Right. And then let's have some trauma tools because we're in traumatology. So that would make sense. And then we'll get... What else can we have? Disinfectant tools. That would make sense. And then some files. And a mug. So a mug. So a green mug. Oh, we can't put a mug on there. That's a bit sad. Oh, botherations. Okay. A flower. Um, let's have a lovely yellow flower. We can have a green flower, so we'll put a yellow flower on. Right, so those are sorted. Um, okay. So that room is sort of... It's, I don't really like the layout of that room now. I've talked myself out of it. I kind of think maybe we have one door in the middle, and then we can just have beds on that side, beds on that side, beds in the middle. But is that a lot of wasted space? I don't know. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, bathroom can wait. We can sort that out later. Let's do this room. So that's going to need an examination table and that's going to be pretty similar. They're going to be quite similar. Okay, let's get these rooms together. I'm just going to put these together because we've seen us putting these rooms together many times. It's an examination table and a trash bin and stuff on the walls and cupboards and desks and all that kind of stuff. So we should be okay with getting these in. So uh, yeah, we'll go and do that now and we'll come back when they're finished. Okay, so both of those rooms are set up. This one here doesn't have a desk. It doesn't have a desk or a PC or a chair or anything like that. It does have stretchers and wheelchairs. So maybe I've put one stretcher and one wheelchair in there right now. Perhaps we need to get two of those in. That might be quite helpful. Although for some reason we can't put the stretchers into that corner. I'm not quite sure why. We could put them into that corner but not the other corner, which is a bit weird. Um, okay, so let's get another stretcher. We've gone for white stretchers this time. So if we say, um, oh, hang on. Why can't, ah, like that, look, put it that way round. So two stretchers and one wheelchair. That should be okay for now. We can always increase that amount if we need to. Um, okay, so they're both done, which is good. So now the final thing we need is the, yo, yeah, hang on, the burn unit isn't done properly. Why is that? Are we lacking something? We're missing equipment. Oh, we're missing... Of course we're missing all of this stuff. We're nowhere near finished in the burn unit. Hang on. We're going to go and do this bit here, look. So let's go and do high dependency. So again, we shall have a modern bed. And we need to figure out what we need to do here as well. If we have another wall coming through the middle, like we've done over here, we can have a row of beds there and a row of beds there possibly. So beds coming in the middle and then we could have a few at the end over here. Let's put one here for now look. So you can come in and immediately you can get access to a bed. So we'll have one of those. Ah these do have bedside cabinets. That's very exciting. Um, can you change the colour of the bedside cabinets? No you can't. Boo. Um, okay and then we need a life monitor advanced to go with that. They hang off the ceiling, which is quite handy. Uh, then we need a defibrillator. I mean, they could just kind of go along one of the walls, possibly. Hang on a second. So they could go, say... I mean, why don't we put them in the middle on that side there? That's okay. Um, ah, yeah, there we go. That's why we need the wall in. So they can have bed sockets. Because at the moment, that's not going to do anything. Hang on. So we need to get a wall in the middle of here. I'm sure this isn't the best way to do this. I bet there's a much better way. But we will do it this way because, you know, we're bumbling around. And that's what we do in the Geek Cupboard. Hang on. So how big is that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bother. Okay. So one, two, three. So if we draw a bit of a thing like that. And then we just pick that up and move it to the... Oh, hang on a minute. 
Let's <laughs> do that bit there as well if you're being fussy. Um, and then, yeah, we'll pick that up and move it. So let's just grab that and then just shuffle it up there, look. No, don't move. I don't want you to move the wall section. Don't grab the walls. Ah, oh, dearie me. Okay. <laughs> um, right, hang on a minute. Do that. Put the wall back in, which is a little bit irritating. But there we go. Do that. I mean, maybe the lesson should be do it correctly first time. But there we go. Never mind. Right. So we've got one bed in there that is currently a, a valid room. I mean, it's a bit of a rubbish room, but it's valid. And that's sort of what we want from that. So there, now which money we've got? 51 grand. Let's copy. Oh, it's going to copy this wall here, isn't it? Don't copy the wall. Don't copy the wall, please. I don't want you to do that. You're going to copy the wall, aren't you? Hang on. So if we grab that and put that there. Yeah, it's but a little wall in the middle. I mean, could we... Is that that bad, actually? Is it that bad that there is a wall? A little bit of a sort of a privacy barrier? Maybe, just to make it a bit different, uh, maybe we could just remove, say, one little bit of the wall just there. There we go. That's okay. That's okay. But yeah, hang on. That wall's going to be different, isn't it? That's going to be copying the outside wall. Hang on a minute. <laughs> this is this is all sorts of all over the place. Right, there we go. So that should be a bit better. Yeah, they've got their own little sort of a bit of a privacy barrier type thing. That's okay. I don't mind that so much. That's that's quite nice, actually. So there we go. Right. And that room is valid right now. We can add bits in later. We can throw more things in. But right now, that is a valid room. I mean, you can into the high dependency unit. You can put a bookcase if you'd like to, and a radio. I mean, are they taking it seriously? If people are in high dependency, are they going to want to listen to, you know, the the golden oldies or, you know, the best hits from the 80s or whatever? I'm not entirely sure, but okay, right, that's fine. And then, yeah, over here, what do we do with this room? Have we done this room correctly? I'm not entirely sure we have. I think we might have made a bit of a bodge of this. So do we put those along there? So do we sort of pick that up and then drag all the stuff around? Please don't pick up the wall. I don't want you to move the wall. There we go. So like that, look. So pick up all of that stuff and move that. It has, it's picked up a bit of, I don't know what it's doing with the walls. Because that's move, isn't it? Move a room. It's not moved the walls, it's picked... I'm very confused. <laughs> okay, so if we do that, look, and then we can have beds along there, beds along there, and then maybe down the side, we can have equipment. That could be quite handy. And then we can have beds across there as well. And then, yeah, down here, we can have all sorts of bits and bobs they need. Because, yeah, they need, like, equipment cabinets and sinks and all that kind of stuff. So, um, okay, let's get, I would say then, let's have... A scrubbing let's have two scrubbing sinks like that and then on this side we'll kind of mirror that so two scrubbing sinks like that that's okay um i'm just gonna sort out the the wall over here because it's all over the place <laughs> hang on a second a bit of that please and uh, oh crikey is can we see it? yep there we go bit like that and then yeah we'll lop that end bit off so they have got what have they got yeah one little bit i quite like that so you can still see around, but it, you can't stare directly at the person next to you. That sort of makes sense, I think. That's okay. Um, right, so they've got their scrubbing sinks. That's important. Uh, defibrillator on the wall. That can go either side of there, like that. Um, and then we need, yeah, equipment. So equipment cabinets. So how about either side of the sinks, we have some equipment cabinets. Okay, there we go. So that room is now valid. Again, it's not entirely complete. I mean, how about we provide some sanitary equipment um, just there and there? That's quite good. Anything else we'd like to throw in? So they can wash their hands. That's okay. And they've got sanitary equipment. I imagine that's like gloves and PPE and stuff. And then they've got the equipment cabinets as well. So they can get equipment. Um, all that I think can wait. So I think... That's ready to go. Hang on, let's have a quick check. So look, they're all in. We're lacking staff. Of course we are. But I think that's sort of ready to go. So now we need to employ lots of people. All the other things can wait. So the bathroom can wait over there. And the sort of restroom can wait over here. Because we need people. We need lots of people in here now. So here we go. The only thing is, are these rooms big enough? Are we going to be able to get all of these people in? I don't think we are. I think possibly we might have made a little bit of a boo-boo with our rooms down here. 
now I'm thinking, do we put the bathroom here and have a small bathroom and then put the nurse's thing and the doctor thing over here because that is significantly bigger. Because yeah, we need three doctors on the day staff. We need three in the day staff and one in the night. At the moment, we can only have two in the day. Ah, oh, botherations. Okay, we might need to pick all that stuff up and move it over here. Right, that's what we're going to do. I've, is that much bigger though? It is a little bit bigger. I think it can fit maybe some more desks or something. And so, um, yeah, okay, right, hang on a minute. Unzone that, unzone that. Right, we're going to break everything again. Hooray, there we go. <laughs> we're making things complicated. It's all fun. Right, so drag that in like that. That doesn't need those fancy doors and such. Um, and then we want to get the, hang on a minute, where is it? It's over here. So the on-call room doesn't actually need to be that big. It's the nurse's station that needs to be a little bit bigger because it does have all the extra kit in it. It's got all the extra bits and bobs. So I think that should be okay. So yeah, we should be able to fit quite a few desks in there. So we can have two that side, two that side. Okay, right. Now I'm just going to move things over. Hang on a second. Let's pick up all the stuff and we'll drag it over somewhere. And then we'll just sort of move it about and make it fit into its new home. Okay, there we go. All the stuff has been moved over and we do have a little bit more room over there now where we can put some more desks, which is very handy. So let's go and do that now, shall we? So the on-call room needs that desk, which is green. Yep, there we go. So put a desk in there and then a desk in that corner there. A bit of a tight fit over there, but that's okay. Then we'll get the chairs in. Hang on a second. Um, then we'll get the computers in. So put a PC on the thing, put a PC on the thing. And then we will get a little... Do they have printers? Uh, oh yeah, no, there they are. There they are. Right, we'll have a printer there and a printer there. Okay, so now we should be able to hire three people. So we can have three doctors on the day shift and we can have three on the night shift. We don't need that many. So we need one on the night shift. And then we can have the right amount of nurses. Okay. So that's all we need. So it's quite a big... Obviously, there's a lot of space for this department. But really, it's all over here, isn't it? Oh, we need somebody over here as well. We need ourselves a, um, a daytime lab tech and a nighttime lab tech to work the... Whatever that is. The cardiography stuff. So, okay. That's fine. We can work on that. That's okay. So hang on. Let's do that first, shall we? Let's do our wonderful lab technician. So here we go. Um, what are you doing? You're a cardio tech. So we want to make sure that you have good cardiology. I mean, Judy Williams is looking pretty good. 43%. Uh, she gets a bit hungry quickly. But you know what, Judy? I understand that that's fine. Um, and she uses her free time to study. She does have a hidden perk, however. Let's reveal what that is. She's a fast learner. Okay, right. I think we get you in to cover the day shift. So let's get you. That's a germaphobe. That's a bit of a shame because you'd be quite good if you didn't have that, which is a bit of a bother. Casey Walker, you could be quite good as well for possibly the night shift. Um, Sarah's got clean feet. She's pleasant. She's a fresh parent. So rest levels decrease faster. Oh, okay. And um, she's a hard worker. So maybe Sarah and Judy could be quite good. We can get both of these in right now. So, I mean, neither of them are better at working in the day or the night time or whatever. So, um, I don't know. Sarah, do you want to work in the day? Yeah, you can work in the day. And then Judy can work at night. Unless somebody new has come in that's amazing. Um, no, Judy, you can work at night. There we go. So they're in already. So that means that, yes, we've now got cardio tech sorted out. We haven't got a USG person. Do we need one of those? We've got plenty of stretchers. Um, it just says zero, so we don't need one of those. I imagine it's a nice thing to have. Okay, here we go. Let's go over to the Wheel of Names and get our first two people over here. So two technologists, they need names. Let's see who's going to join the staff. So our cardiology expert on the day shift over in traumatology is Kuchiki Mimi, which is a wonderful name. And then over on the night shift, we have the splendid John Hoffman. So there we go. Two new people have joined over there. And that's really good. I'm very happy with that. So that's nice and easy. They're sorted out and they've got some good skills. Cardiology 40, cardiology 43. That's pretty good. Okay, so that's that sorted. Now we come to the complicated stuff because now we need to get ourselves lots of doctors and various nurses, all with different skills and bits and bobs. So what do we need? So in the daytime, we need three doctors. Okay, one of them has to be a surgeon. One of them has to be an anesthesiologist. We need three nurses, but two of those nurses have to be surgery nurses. Okay, and then on the night shift, 
We need one doctor. We need... It says zero out of zero surgeons, but if we can find a nighttime surgeon, that'll be helpful. We need somebody to do anaesthetics. We need one nurse and we need no surgery nurses. So maybe, yeah, it looks like they don't do surgery at nighttime. It looks like surgery is just a daytime thing because, yeah, you need no surgeons. I wonder if we do kit out the night shift the same as the day shift, they would do operations. Maybe that's what they would do if they had the right people. But, uh, okay, right, fine. So that's going to take a while to do. So, yeah, we need to get one surgeon and one anaesthetics person at least. And then we need two surgery nurses. And then I think that'll all be up and running. I think that will be very exciting indeed. I mean, yeah, these rooms are still a little bit all over the place. They're a little bit of a slapdash effort, but we'll get that sorted. And we have got to put in our break room and a bathroom over there. But I think that's it. So that's very exciting. And of course, when that does actually happen, we'll complete this as well. We'll get 10 grand back, which is quite nice. We've got 35 grand just short of now, which is okay. That's okay. But yeah, we'll get 10 grand given back to us, which is quite nice. So um, yeah, here we go. Let's go and employ some people. Let's go and grab ourselves three doctors for the daytime and at least one for the nighttime. And then let's get ourselves three daytime nurses and at least one nighttime nurse. So I think let's get the nurses in first, shall we? Here we go. So let's get our first daytime nurse. And can we please have a look at who has got that skill there? Medical surgery. Okay, so we've got some people. I mean, Linda Harris does seem to be the best candidate right now because she's got medical surgery of 37%. Then we've got 11%, 10% and 9%. It's just getting worse as we go further down. I mean, Linda Harris might be okay. Patient care, 26%. Medical surgery, 37%. But she is hiding two secrets from us. Do you know what? We've got about 35 grand. We want to make sure that we get this up and running properly. So we need to hire the best staff we can. So go on then. We'll spend a thousand of our money on revealing hidden perks. And you're a germaphobe, but you are loyal. Okay, this is interesting because we've got a, an interesting mix of people, in fact. Because look, these two live far away. But that person there, Rachel Lee, works very effectively during the night. But she lives far away, so she might be late quite often. I mean, this isn't a wonderful mix of people, is it? Do you know what? We've got the money. We're going to spend two and a half grand on picking up some new candidates because this lot are just not good enough. So, okay, there we go. And then we need to spend a thousand on getting all of the perks revealed. These seem better. These seem better, particularly the top. T oh, no. <laughs> okay, so Sarah Robinson did look good because look at that. She works more efficiently during the day. You think, ah, that's really good. She's got dirty feet. I mean, yeah, very dirty shoes. That's sort of okay. We've got cleaners to work around that. And she's an alcoholic. She will often show up late and hungover. That is not the kind of person you want tending to medical surgery. Then we've got Dana Foster. She lives really far away and is depressed and is a germaphobe. So that's not good. You're an alcoholic. And then down here, Patricia Clark does have medical surgery for 14%. She works well in the day and she's a slow learner. Brilliant. Okay, we're going to spend another two and a half grand and hopefully this time round we can get some people that aren't a bit rubbish. Okay, so now I've got Frank Lewis who lives far away. Why does everyone live really far away? What is going on? Right, hang on, hang on. We've got two people down here that might possibly be good. Please don't have rubbish hidden perks. Please be good. Oh, thank goodness, though. Right, we've got two down here. So Elizabeth Foster and Susan Jones. They can come in immediately. Nancy Wright. I mean, that's a bit annoying. Long commute. A long drive from home can often be late for work. But she is very good. She's very good. I mean, Frank. Frank works better in the day, which is good. Fast metabolism. Hunger increases quicker. So he's going to be hungry more often. And yeah, another long commuter. But Elizabeth Foster just has slow learner. Oh, well, that's not great too. I mean, Susan Jones is pretty good. So a people person and resistance. So we'll get Susan Jones. Hooray, we've at least found one decent person. But yeah, now we need somebody else with that skill. So here we go. Who else are we going to pick? Um, I mean, somebody else should have appeared by then. So another person should have appeared. Is it Susan Garcia down here? I mean, all the... What is going on? All the people who've got medical surgery seem to live a bajillion miles away. What is going on? Why are they all so far away? Um, how about then we get, I mean, she's got medical surgery of 33% and you've got 39%. So maybe one of you could work on the night shift and one of you could work on the day shift. That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? And then we'd have a nighttime surgery nurse as well. 
that would help quite a bit, I think. But um, OK, let's get you in then. Let's get Susan Garcia in on the day shift. OK, so now we've got our two surgery nurses. That's good. So that is ticked off, which is wonderful. But we still need a third nurse. But then we do need a nighttime nurse as well. Hang on. Who else has come in? Who's the new person that's popped in? Um, hang on a minute. Put it on there. Um, Nancy Thomas. However, ah, right. So she's a scholar. That's good. But she does have two hidden perks. Do we want to know what they are? Do we need to know what they are? Because I'd like to get, if possible, another surgery nurse. So if one of the surgery nurses is away washing their hands or whatever, then um, then yeah, we can get another one in. That would help quite a lot. So yeah, they can cover for each other. So it would be good if they all had that skill. Um, I mean, do we go for Nancy Wright? Again, a long commute, but we've got somebody else who's on a long commute. So a long commute and a Spartan. How about we go for that? So go for Nancy Wright. So three people in the day with the medical surgery skill. That's good. And then... I mean, let, let's sort the day staff out, actually. So there we go. So that is the daytime nurses sorted. And they've all got that skill. And now we go over to the doctors. Okay, so here we go. So let's sort out an anesthesiologist first. The word that I can't say. Um, oh, crikeys. Okay. Okay. So nobody's particularly amazing at it. Peter Clark does have 29% in anesthesiology. That's not very much, is it? It's not very much at all, but you're quite good at dealing with traumatology. 84% and then 29% anesthesiology is actually okay. That's not too bad. You do have two hidden secrets. Go on, let's pay to reveal the secrets. Ah, you're depressed and you're comforting. Bother, you're an alcoholic, you live far away. Okay, how about Peter Hernandez down here? Um, you're a people person and you have that resistance skill and you can improve. You're okay. Look at that. Traumatology, 62. And anesthesiology, 16%. You're okay. You can come in and we'll try and get another, another anesthetics person as well. So there we go. So we'll get you in on the day shift. And then can we have another... I mean, do we need to get another anesthetics person? We definitely need a surgeon. So let's get a surgeon. Let's have a look at who can do surgery. Oh, dearie me. Right. The pool of people is not good. Trauma surgery, 7%. They live far away. 16%. 36%, but they're hiding secrets. Okay, let's find out what they are. Um, you're a good boss and you're a germaphobe. Um, ah, hang on. Rachel White. So Rachel White is a fast learner. You eat a bit. That's okay. You're a gamer, so resting is much faster. And you have clean feet. Okay, so the only bad thing is you get a little bit peckish. I'm okay with that. And you've got trauma surgery of 32%, traumatology of 63%. So I think we get you in as well. So you're our surgeon. And then, I mean, really, I'd like to get another surgeon. I'd like to get somebody in who's a bit better. Hang on. Patricia Hall down here. Ah, she works better at night time. I suppose we could get you in on the night shift. And you're a diagnostic genius and you have a secret. Do you know what? I'm willing to overlook your deep, dark secret just so we can get a person in on the night shift. So hang on a minute. So Patricia Hall, yes, you can come in on the night shift because you're good at that. Um, we need a nighttime anesthesiologist as well um, because it says one out of zero, actually, but I would like to get that done. And we need a nighttime nurse, of course. But okay, right. And then we need another daytime doctor. So, I mean, do we go for, do we go for another surgeon or do we go for another anesthesiologist person. Hang on, let's have a little look. Who else can come in and do anesthesiology? I can't, I struggle to say that word and it's making me say it a lot. Um, I mean, all these people are a bit rubbish. Patricia Davis, 22%. Right, what have we got? 25 grand just short of. Again, we want to get this working properly. So here we go. Let's spend two and a half thousand of our money, which I think is very expensive. But there we go, to refresh that list there. Um... Okay, 43%, 47%. This is much better. This is a much better pool of people. Oh, this is way better. Okay, right. So we've got Charles Rodriguez. Charles Rodriguez is anesthesiology, 43%. You've got clean feet and you're very good at doing practical diagnoses. That's handy. Frank Miller's 31%. You're a good boss and a hard worker. And then you've got a variety of negative things. But Okay, so I think let's get Charles Rodriguez in. So you can go and do that as well. So there we go. So we've got two anaesthetics people 
That's quite good. And three doctors overall and our surgeon. So daytime shift is done. Night shift, not quite sorted. But yeah, could we then get ourselves a nighttime anesthesiologist just in case? Just in case. Um, let's have a little look. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Susan Rodriguez down here. Anesthesiology, 41%. She works better at night and she's a gamer and no hidden skills. Absolutely. In you come. Okay. And then we just need nighttime nurses. And then that department will be up and running. Okay, hang on a minute. So let's go over here. Let's find a night time. Oh, yeah, it would be nice if we could have a surgery nurse at night time, just in case there is a little, a little you know, emergency need for some nighttime medical surgery. So I think, um, I mean, yeah, 35% is pretty good. Can we reveal your perks? You're a people person and you're loyal. Yes, you're perfect. In you come. Absolutely. And there we go. So I think we've been given 10 grand back, which is quite nice. So that's paid for our staff checks there. So there we go. We're back up to 30,000, well, 30 and a half thousand dollars. But that's all running now. Look at that. So we have us as our cardio tech overnight. That's you over there. And then we've got plenty of surgery nurses in the day. We've got plenty of doctors in the day. Nighttime, we've got a decent complement of staff. I mean, I am tempted to get another nighttime nurse just to help out a bit because the nurses do sort of uh, shuffle people around on the stretchers as well. So it might be quite helpful if there was another nurse around just to, you know, help out the one that's on their own at the moment. So I think maybe, yeah, we will get another nighttime nurse. I mean, do we want to have a clinical specialist nurse? Would that help? Or is it worth having another surgery nurse? Or do we just want somebody who's really good at doing the nursing, really good at patient care? which is none of those people. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. These people are all, you're all spectacularly rubbish at doing nurse stuff. Patient care, 37%. Patient care, 18%. Come along now. Um, Elizabeth Allen, you seem okay. Clinical nurse specialist. How about them? We spend another grand and get this Spartan and a people person. Elizabeth Allen, in you come. There we go. So now we've got plenty of cover as well. So yeah, we've got, the only thing is, yeah, three... Now, yeah, I was going to say we've got three daytime doctors, but we've only got three desks. So I think that's done. I think that's up and running. And now look, the little kind of exclamation mark thing down there has disappeared because, of course, this department is now up and running and is entirely valid. OK, right. I think now we have a lot of work to do on the Wheel of Names. Right. Hang on. Let's start with the doctor, shall we? Let's go over here and sort out the Wheel of Names for the doctors over here. So we've got five new people to welcome via the Wheel of Names. Here we go. Okay, so joining the daytime doctor shift in traumatology, we have Andy Adlan, then we have Porthos, and then we have Ben V. And then on the night shift, we have Assassin Agent. I mean, maybe don't introduce yourself as Dr. Assassin Agent. Probably just say Dr. Agent. I think maybe the assassin side of things might make the patients feel a little bit uncomfortable. So Dr. Agent, and then we have Abigail age as well. So there we go. Five wonderful doctors starting over here in traumatology. So that's that sorted. And now we need to do the same again for all of the nurses over here. So here we go. Let's go back to the wheel of names and get five more people. Okay. So the nurses on the day shift in traumatology are Trek Nerd 85. I like that. So we've got Nurse Nerd 85. That's quite fun. And then we've got Grace 33 Ms. Diamond. And then we have Foxy. So they're the three daytime nurses. And then covering the night shift over here, we've got Hen Dog and we've got Mike Lee or Leia or Leah possibly. So Mike over there. So there we go. I think we are ready to go. Let's see how this functions. So welcome aboard new staff people. I think now we can open up. I mean, it's a bit minimal right now, particularly the high dependency unit. We might need some more beds in there at some point, but it's sort of okay for now. It's all valid and up and running. So let's move time on because so far in this entire video, no time has passed by. We've just been doing all of this kind of massive building project. So there we go. Hopefully time can tick on. We've got our nighttime traumatology doctor over there. So we need to see when these things head out now, when the flashy lights and Eno machines head out, we need to see who's coming in. Although right now it's very quiet over here. In fact, you know what? Um, there's somebody running in at great speed. Where are they running? Well, what do you, hang on, why are you in search? You're performing trauma stabilization on Peter Hernandez. Where is Peter Hernandez? Peter Hernandez? <laughs> where are you? You've ran over here and you're stabilizing somebody, but I don't know where Peter Hernandez is. Peter Hernandez is not there. 
do you th- are you expecting Peter Hernandez to be there? Is he being brought in to be stabilised? <laughs> do they know he's on the way? I'm a bit confused because there is definitely nobody there. I mean, that room is very quiet. That's the quietest we've seen that room in a good long time. Hang on, whilst it is quiet, can we make some changes to this room? So a few people did point out that uh, when the doctors in here need to wash their hands, they have to go out the room and go next door because there's no sinks in here. So we do need to get some sinks in here. So that's what that back wall could be for. But yeah, I think we need to kind of rearrange this a little bit as well. That bit there, look, is in a bit of a silly place now because we didn't really know what we were doing with that at the time. So hang on. Can we please move some of this around? Also pressing the right button would help quite a bit. So hang on, go to there. Right, so let's move that out of the way temporarily. Yeah, look, that bed is apparently in use. I'm not entirely sure by whom. It's a bit of a mystery. Right, I think that can just go anywhere, can't it? As long as we have one of those around, it's valid. So if we then grab, hang on, so all of those things as well, we can just sort of move out the way for now. We're going to sort them out. And somebody did say, can you please more more equipment things around the place? I think they were an actual nurse. And they said, please move the things around because it's really complicated. You, all your nurses have to go and grab equipment from the other side of the room. And that's not very efficient. So, OK, we'll try and do that as well. But hang on. Let's move that around first. So grab all that. Now, we've not picked up the floaty screens at the top there. Hang on. We'll sort that out in a second. And then we'll put that down here although that does look slightly different to that one why is that why is that slightly different hang on a minute hang on oh we need to just push it all up against the wall i think so can it go like that can we make it even nearer to make best use of the space um i don't know what do we do with this have they all got these have they all got one of these i think it's sort of is it like hang on, where's that one like that is that fine is that valid I think that's how the hang on how do that how are they working <laughs> what are these ones like over here so there is a bit more of a gap between those possibly we do need to have a little bit more of a gap because it looks a bit squished doesn't it um oh it's in the gap right okay so it's to the right of the whatever that blue machine thing is okay right so hang on a minute so let's possibly sort that out a bit over here so um yeah that just needs to move over a bit move that over oh, we can't move that over first we have to move that first then that has to go there oh, hang on maybe they can't put that there because that's the hang on that's supposed to go there look and then that goes there and then the light thingamajig oh no hang on where's how do we pick up that thing off the ceiling <laughs> how do we pick up the thing that's on the ceiling because i don't think that's in the right place either uh what does that go oh, no that goes with the that goes with the bed that goes with the bed okay now that's fine there we go and then what have we got 30 grand that's okay for now, but then yes, now we need to put more things in here to make this room a bit better. So this back wall here can have various bits and bobs on it. Right? You know, the, the bins can go down here, look, because that'll get them sort of out the way like that. And then we want to have, let's move that out the way as well and that for now. So that thing can go, uh, let's put one just there, look, and then we'll have another one of those. Hang on, to get another defibrillator. There are only 500 of the money, so they're okay. So a defibrillator there and one there. And then possibly even put one down here as well. So they can go and grab a defibrillator wherever they are in the room. That's quite good. And then we want to get some scrubbing sinks. There we go. Yes, let's get that done so people can wash their hands in this room. That would make life a bit easier, wouldn't it? So if we say put uh, one, two, hang on. Hang on. I don't know why I got rid of that. I need to count something with it. Hang on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right. That's in the middle. So two places to go and wash your hands. That's fine. Uh, we have got a thing there as well. What's that? Oh, that's like antibacterial gel or whatever it is. Um, okay. So hang on. Pop that on that wall for now. Then we'll put a cabinet of equipment stuff there. And then can we have another one there? That's fine. And then possibly... Can we put them down here as well? Is that going to interfere with the things? Apparently, it can be placed down there, it says. Um, but not there. Okay, so there's a bit more room over here than there is over there. But I feel like that would be a useful thing to have down here. Um, maybe, maybe we don't have... Um, oh no, the fibrillator's fine. Hang on, I want to get the bin. How do we get the bin? There we go. Move the bin over to there, possibly. And then, uh, can we put the defibrillator over there possibly and then can we have another equipment cabinet down here 
So if you're down this end of the room, you don't have to run all the way over there to grab whatever it is you need. I think that might help quite a bit. And then we could, could we put some wall mounted things? Can we have some wall mounted stuff? Um, I don't know. I mean, is it worth having more equipment things over there or more places to wash hands? I'm not entirely sure what the best thing to do is. I mean, how about mobile cabinets? We can have a nice blue mobile cabinet thing and they could just push it to wherever it needs to go. Although, hang on, we have got one of these. Maybe we should just put things in the middle as well. Just have a thing like that and a thing like that. What is that? What's that thing? Um, that is a mobile workstation. Provides a mobile workspace for doctors in certain rooms. Okay, firstly, that's the wrong colour because it should be blue. Um, we'll have another one of those, I think. If we pop that there, look, and then we'll have ourselves, I don't know, like a mobile cabinet thing just here. So maybe that will make this room a little bit better. So now they've got places to wash their hands. Um, I mean, yeah, we've got a little bit, a gap there and a gap there. Is it, oh, do you know what this room does lack? Hang on, hang on. Absolute priority thing. It lacks a plant. Got no plants in this room at all. That's a disgrace. That's awful. Right, hang on. We'll have one like that and one like that in the corner. There we go. Right, the room's perfect now. Um, and then, yeah, I think maybe, maybe push that out like that. Push that out like that. Got some gaps in there like that now. So could we, could we do something with, can we either put, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Can we put that? Uh, no, not the not the thing there. I don't want to grab that. The bin is what I wanted. Can we just put the bins by the doors on the way out? And then that, that, that sort of leaves this down here a bit empty. And then we can go back to here and we can get another equipment cabinet to go. It can't go there. Botherations, because it's in the way of that thing. That's a bit of an annoyance, isn't it? Ah, can we have it up on the wall? Can it be a wall mounted thing? Um, equipment cabinet. Um, hang on. Uh, yeah, that's a wall one, isn't it? So can we put it on the wall? No, it'll block access to another object. Now oh, bother. Okay, never mind. Never mind. There's a mobile equipment cabinet there. Do you know what? We'll put another one there, look, just to make sure that you've got loads of stuff. That's good. Um, and then hang on. So these have all got, they're all, look, that one's got one of those machines as well. So how about we move that out and put that there? So we've got a little kind of pool of machines in the middle not quite actually in the middle slightly off center but that's fine so like that so a little sort of pool of useful things in the middle there um although now it's not quite the middle either hang on a minute let's just shuffle them back into the correct place <laughs> we'll find the middle at some point it's fine there we go like that but then i am thinking do we have a couple more either sinks or cupboards let's have some more sinks let's have some more options for washing hands shall we Let's get, um, yeah, another couple of scrubbing sinks because that might help out quite a bit. People don't have to go elsewhere to do that. Um, oh, that board isn't valid anymore because there's a plant in the way. That's a bit of a bother, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, we'll put that there and the board can go. Oh, I don't know where the board can go. Where would this board go well? It can go there, look. People can stand there and do differential diagnosis or whatever it is. Right, so that sorted that room out. So hopefully that's a little bit more efficient now. I mean, do we get another one of those beds in? Given that we do now receive 10 patients per day via the flashy lights and enol machines, is it worth getting another one of those in? Possibly it is. So let's get another one of those in. That's the most we can fit, I think, right now. If, if we rejig things later, we could move the stuff in the middle. But for the moment, let's have... One of those there. This is going to be really expensive, isn't it? Can we afford this? An anesthetics workstation. That's going to have to go in like that. Uh, then we need a medical light, which goes there. And then we need operating room lights, which go there. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. That's slightly different in its layout to those ones, isn't it? I find this, it's very hard to see these. Um, yeah, they've got, hang on there, all those lights are red on the top there, and then blue, Want blue hang on, no, I just changed the colour of it, didn't I? Blue, blue lights, please. Um, yeah, like that, but yeah, those lights are slightly differently positioned, look, that light's at a different angle to those lights. Um, it's probably fine, but that's going to really irritate me when I see that now, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, that's not got the right thing set up. Um, also, that's lacking something. Isn't that lacking something? Isn't that lacking operating room lights? 
It's lacking the big lights over here. Hang on, I'm going to try and sort that out because it's all a bit all over the place. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, maybe we don't need those big lights. Although I don't quite know how to select them now. I'm not quite sure how to pick up the big lights. Um, I can't I can't click on them, look, because they're not sort of... They're not where I'm expecting them to be. They're attached to the ceiling. Right, hang on. Let me go and see if I can rejig that around. This has all got very silly. Hang on a minute. There we go. That's a little bit better. So now the lights are all the same colour and they're all pointing in the same direction with regard to their respective beds. So there we go. It's all looking a little bit more sort of uniform and structured now. And it turns out that we only need one of these two lights. We need either the medical lights or the operating room lights. So we've gone for the medical lights. However, I have just noticed that this table here doesn't have those big kind of light things there. What are they? Is that the digital imaging? Yes, it is. I mean, they've got red on them as well, but do you know what? It's fine. I think we can cope with just the little screens having red handles. So let's pop those there as well, because then it's all nice and samey. So have they all got them on that side? Yes, they have. Okay, so I think that's done. Right, so there we go. We spent quite a chunk of money on that, but I think it's important. I'm still a bit confused as to what's happening over here. I'm a little bit befuddled as to where Peter Hernandez might be. <laughs> Peter Hernandez, are you coming in? Are you on your way? Is he waiting for an X? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yep, there we go. They were waiting for him to come back in. So, yeah, he's got a complicated fracture of the ulna, which doesn't sound very nice at all. But there we go. So, he's being looked after in our newly restructured, way more efficient room over here, which is very good. So, let's see what happens there. Um, ah, Dusty River's finished training. Do you know what you can do, Dusty River? Go back and do some more training. That is your job now. That is your life. You do the training all of the time. Ah, now a few people in the comments did say we need another bed over here in intensive care because when people are stabilised, if somebody comes in here and they collapse or whatever and they need to be stabilised, then they come over here. But I think it's very expensive, isn't it, to get the beds into here. I think it's very costly indeed. So hang on. Let's have a little look. So, yeah, that's all in use. So we'd want a modern bed, which is, what, three grand? And then we'd need that big fancy-looking advanced thing. That's another 2,000. Mechanical ventilator is 2,000. The monitor's one and a half thousand. So we can't really afford it right now. We might have to wait a little while. Do you know what we do need to look at? We need to look at what the next objective is for the, um, for the protect care people. Successfully finish three accident events. Okay, have we seen one of those yet? I don't quite know what that is. And if we do that, we get given a $15,000 government grant. It's not very much money, is it? These ones up here giving us, you know, 100,000, 200,000. This one down here, just a trifling 15 grand. Although, yeah, we do need to try to treat 80 patients a day as well, because that gives us 50 grand and that'd be quite helpful. But okay, right, let's get time ticking on. Let's see if the flashy lights and needle machines bring in traumatology patients over here now, as well as orthopedics patients. And already Peter Hernandez, <laughs> he needs a bed. He needs a bed over here. I mean, can we tell him to go somewhere else for now? Can we just tell him to go to a different bed? Can we say, do you know what? You need to go to a different place, my good sir. Because, um, yeah, he's waiting for... Uh, yeah, because he's a patient over here. Is Can we just tell him... Can we tell him to go to traumatology. Can we tell him to go there? Is that okay? He needs to go to, I know, but it can't be prescribed at that department yet. It's because that department is way too busy, isn't it? Um, I suppose we could push the boat out a little bit and get another bed over there in high dependency. It's pushing the budget a little bit, but do you know what? We've got to do it. It's fine. So hang on. Go to there and go to this and copy that like that please and pop another bed in that's another five and a half grand and already peter hernandez is going to be put into that bed so it's already in use but okay right hang on move time on very quickly um yeah he's now being transported to that room nobody else down here though but one of the flashy lights and enormous machines did just go away so it's going to come back in at some point we will set a two have gone out now okay here we go let's see who they're bringing back in please tell me that they are traumatology patients because we can put them into a ward. We've got space for those. Whereas, yeah, orthopedics is still very busy. Although people are being moved out and about. People are being moved out and about. That's quite handy. Um, Okay, right, hang on. Who's coming? Right, here we go. Here we go. We've got people coming in. So you have broken your arm and you have... Ah, here we go. Here we go. A neck shattered wound. 
polytraumatic penetration of an object that pierces the skin and enters the body with heavy damage to all neighbouring structures and organs. You've been shot, have you? Is that, is that what that means? A neck ballistic wound. So I'm not quite sure what it is. Ballistic trauma caused by high velocity flying projectile result uh, resulting in complex skeletal, vascular and nerve injuries with large soft tissue defects affecting the patient's neck area. So they've been hit by something in the neck whether it's a bit of shrapnel or whether it's a bullet or something, they're not quite sure. Okay, so you, you will be, um, yeah, you're going to go into traumatology. That seems like a traumatological thing. Okay, that's quite good. So we've got another person over here who is, um, who's going to have to go into orthopedics, but at least it's not two people that need to go in. And it looks like maybe, hang on, where are they going? Ah, they're going in for an x-ray. Now, we did sort of see the need last time to maybe have another x-ray room, but we'll muddle through with this for now. How is it looking over here? Can we do any operations? Can we please get people moving around a bit? Um, bed required for treatment. Emergency care is occupied. His staff has been busy for a long time. James Garcia waiting for a free treatment room. Yeah, indeed. You're going to be waiting for a while. There's a bit of a queue. Um, yep, okie dokie. Right, day shift begins. We're about $4,000 $4, down, but that does tick up when people sort of pay over here and such like in the morning. So we'll be all right. We'll get out of debt fairly soon, I would like to think. But um, yeah, I want to see over here. Oh, hang on, there's somebody else coming in. What are you in for? Let's have a quick look. Oh, you're in for your orthopedics. <laughs> no, not orthopedics. Um, do we have anybody over here? in traumatology. Not right now. Hang on. Yes. Yes, we do. We've got our first traumatology inpatient. Hello there. So, um, yeah, it's Casey Harris who got shot or got his neck shattered or whatever it was. He's got something sticking in his neck and he's unconscious and a foreign object is present. He's not having a wonderful time of things. Okay, that's fine. So foreign object removal is in HDU. He's on oxygenotherapy. Okay, so we'll make sure he's okay. We're going to make sure you're okay, my good sir. Oh, hang on. You're going somewhere else. You're going in here for a little bit of a look by one of the staff. They're making sure you're okay. And then you're going back to bed. Okay, so you are being looked after, which is good. Let's have a little look. Oh, yeah, there we go. Finished three accident events. And how are we doing in terms of patient numbers? 11 o'clock, 32, 33, 34, 35. It's ticking up. We might well treat 80 patients in one day now. This looks fairly quiet over here, which is quite good. How are we doing? Are we doing surgery? Are we trying to... Yeah, here we go. There's going to be busy in surgery for a while. We need to do a lot of surgery to remove the backlog over here. There's so many people in there. <laughs> there are so many people, but okay. Right. Do more surgery, please, folks. Um, let's just make sure we get this out of the way. And yeah, actually, again, a few people in the comments did say that they don't think we've got the right staff set up to do surgery at night time but i think we have we've got an anesthesiologist we need two surgery nurses I and mean, maybe they just don't do that at night maybe they just don't do surgery at night time maybe it's not a done thing i thought it wouldn't really make any difference really but maybe they just don't do it so yeah we need that says we need three doctors i mean how many do we need to actually what do we need to actually do the stuff so did we need We've got one doctor on the night shift. We've got no... Ah, we've got... Oh, we've got no surgeons on the night shift. That would possibly explain why we're not doing any surgery at night time. Because we have no nighttime surgeons. <laughs> that would sort of explain it, wouldn't it? I thought we did. I thought we did have a nighttime surgeon. Hang on, Frank the Tea Tank is an orthopedic surgeon. So why hasn't it come up as... Hang on, three slash... Three slash one. So three day and one in the night... Uh, yeah, we only one in the day. I don't think they do nighttime surgery. I don't think they do. Maybe that's not a thing that happens. Ah, okay, right, fine. There we go. We'll have to just hope they do lots of surgery during the day. Just yeah, really churn, churn, turn this into a very, very sort of busy department and just get people going through here really, really fast. That's another person going in. And hopefully, when they've gone from here, they go into the regular ward. David King is, yep, yeah, is unfortunately having a little bit of a problem trying to get into here because it's very busy. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Just hang around over here for a bit. You also need to go over there. Yeah, we might just send some people away, possibly. <laughs> We're a little bit too busy for all that. But um, yeah, we'll just make sure. We'll make sure. I'd like us, if at all possible, to get up to the 80 people. 
I think now we get 98 people coming in through the doors. We should be okay. Lounge orthopedics is full and patient can't receive their visitor. Try to add more visitor chairs. Oh, okay. We've not seen that before. Hang on. The lounge at orthopedics. We do have a little lounge over here. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a, I mean, I say a little lounge. It's a, it's a very little lounge. It's a teeny tiny lounge. Um, hang on, move all those things out of the way. And how can we sort of sort this out? Hang on, drop those things away. There we go. So it's not a very busy, uh, very big room. Uh, could we fit another? Hang on, hang on. We can do this. We can work on this. It's going to be fine. I'm going to click on that. Can we get another set of visitor seats like that? No, we can't put them. Oh, they have to have a little space to the side so people can sort of slide in. Um, okay, that's not ideal, is it? Do you know what we could do? We could just expand the room to there and have the door here and have a little bit more room. Okay, that's something that we need to think about. That's something we need to think about because that room isn't big enough. But uh, oh, there you go. And we're up to about 28 grand already. That's quite nice. The money is coming in. We're in debt. Now it's all fine. Um, I think, do you know what? Let's very quickly sort of rejig this. Let's sell that as well. <laughs> Give us some money back on that thing. There we go. Um, let's rejig this room as quick as we can. Let's just get that done nice and quick. Hang on, let's just expand it out a little bit and just add some more visitor seats. There we go, that's a little bit better. So now we can fit another, what, three pairs of those in? So that should be plenty. So there we go, like that. And then I think we need to rotate those round, don't we? So, there, hang on. How can they go next to a wall? How can those ones go next to a wall? Ah, there's a bin. There's a bin there. That would be why. Oh, I've missed the wall out just there. Hang on, I need to sort that wall out. Um, I didn't realise there was a bin there. I bought a new bin. Okay, do you know what? Never mind. We'll put that somewhere else. What room needs a bin? What room could do with having a lovely bin in it? That room there is quite big. That nurse's station is quite big. Uh, let's pop a bin. They've already got a bin. Which room needs a bin in it? Which room needs a little kind of uh, a little trash bin type thing? Uh, there's plenty over there. What about over here, possibly? What about round here? They've got loads over here as well. There's an abandoned wheelchair there. That's always fun. Oh, I'm not entirely sure. Do you know what? We could just sell it. Uh, we'll put it there. And then, do you know what? Farewell, Bin. We'll get some money back from you. There you go. All of $14. Very good. Um, right, where were we? Lounge. That's it. Lounge. Uh, let's get those walls sorted, actually. Oh, no. Hang on. Seats. Put the seats in first. Boom. Right, okay. So three more pairs of seats. That's really good. So that you know, can fit a lot more people in. And um, yeah, just very quickly, let's get the wall sorted for there. So yeah, just drag that across like that. And there we go. Oh, hang on. That's going to have a different kind of wall over with the corridor, isn't it now as well? Hang on a second. Because I bet it looks a bit weird. Yeah, it looks a bit odd. So we'll change that round so it's the nice sort of lounge walls. Okay, there we go. Sorted that out. So now you can go and visit whoever it was you wanted to visit. There we go. Um, Daniel Adams, who is... Uh, an acrobat, which is nice. That's exciting. Good for you. You're now over here. Okay, so you are... Oh, you've left after your visit. Oh, we just sorted out an entire room for you. <laughs> you've cleared off. It's a bit rude. Okay, never mind. There we go. There we go. He's gone away, but it's all fine. At least that room is now significantly bigger. And the people are coming into traumatology now. Look at this. We've got three people over here with burns. I mean, that's not good. It's not good that they've got burns. But yeah, it's good for us that they're actually in the hospital. Karen Robinson is having a little bit of a collapse. Karen, stay with us. Karen, where are you? Oh, <laughs> she's right there. And <laughs> Rebecca Hendy has just walked straight past like, nope, nope, I'm not dealing with that. I'm going to go and get myself a glass of orange juice. I'm very important, don't you know? Okay, no, they're going to do a very important job, I'm sure. But here we go. That person is being stabilised. But, um, yeah, so three people in already. You're in for frostbite. You're in for frostbite. And you're in for frostbite. Okay, so it must be very cold out there at the minute. It's a very chilly time. And, you know, chilly time with lots of snakes around. But, okay. Right, so she's been stabilised. Is she going to go into that bed there yes okay so we do need to get another one of those in as well but right now that's good there we go look she's in there they're watching her she's gonna yeah, be okay because it's all lovely in there okay right i think we're gonna move time on we need another 11 people um treatment for the patient's diagnosis is not available concentrated oxygen i don't know what that means what does concentrated oxygen mean how are we supposed to do th what is that um, we need, uh, hang on, we need an office diagnostic unit, burn unit. Um, well, where are you? You can't be treated. Is it because 
Is it because there's no beds in here? Is that the problem? We can always throw another bed in, if that's what you need. We can always add another bed. It's fine. We can do that now. We've got 30 grand. Hang on a minute. Let's put another bed in. Maybe that is the issue. So just drop another bed in. Is that going to be okay for Chappie? Patient can't be fully treated. I think maybe now... He just he can't be treated. I don't fully understand what that means. You can't do the thing. Okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to provide something. Uh, it says required room. We've not got... That's not in red anymore. Maybe he'll go at some point. Hang on. Concentrated oxygen. Um, surgeries and certain more complicated procedures require prior hospitalization. Okay. Well, then let's put let's put you in the burn unit then. Put you in the burn unit. There you go. There's a bed in the burn unit for you, Frank Thomas. You can go to bed. There you go. You go into bed, Frank. Have a little sit down. Okay. Come on. We need eight more people. Eight more people and we get given a lovely 50 grand. Okay. Somebody else is collapsing. This isn't very good at all. She's got a pulmonary laceration. Um, okay, yeah, she's been hit by an arrow or something as well. What is going on out there? Hang on, whereabouts are you? You are... Oh, you're in bed already. But it looks like you are being stabilised. There's no free bed in... Oh, in intensive care. <laughs> we need more of everything, it seems. Right, hang on a minute. Let's go and create another intensive care bed. Hang on a second. Right. Um, yep, yeah, let's grab all the expensive machinery. Uh, we'll have one lot. Do you know what? We'll have two, because why not? We had some money at one point, so there we go. We'll get that set up. So now they should be able to move her over, and something weird happened there. I don't quite know what that was. Ah, we've paid the day shift, and now we're 18,000 uh, money in debt. That's not very good, but we do pay a lot of money, and we did just invest in some beds over here. So hopefully, yeah, we don't need to do that again for a while. I'd like to think that we wouldn't have more than three collapsed patients at any one point, so... Now we need to get back into, you know, the financial good books, as it were. But we will see. We'll see if that works. But uh, yeah, if we could treat two more patients. There we go. That's helped out quite a bit. 50 grand. That's very welcome. And now we need to treat 90 patients per day. And that means that the next intern available will be a great candidate. That is quite good. OK. Also, I forgot we're earning less money. Of course we are. Because, yeah, the insurance payments are 20% lower. So we're earning 20% less money from all of the stuff we're doing. So maybe that's why our finances aren't flying up quite as much as they could be. But okay, I think with that done and with that 50 grand now given to us, so we're not in the red anymore, I think we'll finish things up for now. But that's gone okay. That's gone okay. We've got our traumatology, hospitalization bit all up and running. There is a little bit of work to do over here. So we need to get a bathroom in over here. I think we can change the doors to the bathroom. And then a little sort of break room over there. That would be quite nice as well. And then we're going to get another bathroom in over here. Maybe finish this bit off. Because I don't quite remember what's going into there. But we have got a few bits and bobs to do around the place. But I think overall that's gone pretty well. I'm quite happy with that. And we're not seeing quite as many nagging messages for people requiring beds over here in high dependency in orthopedics in fact there is a spare bed there's a spare bed maybe it's your bed possibly i don't know but i think we're sort of managing that okay now traumatology hospitalization being set up has taken a bit of the burden away from orthopedics so i mean yeah you're in for you are an orthopedics patient as are you as are you Okay, maybe it's not doing stuff quite so much, but okay, never mind. And as are you as well. Okay, right. It's still going to be busy. So maybe next time we look at getting a lot more doctors and nurses in so they can perform two lots of operations at the same time to so split that room up and have it as two operating lounges, possibly. That'd be quite good. That's something we could think about for next time. But yeah, for now, we'll finish up and see what happens when we come back. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Oh no, not the piggy wigs. Want them to be healthy. Happy pigs, please. Raspberries, raspberries, raspberries everywhere. I went through and sold a load of turkeys as well, and they still come back. They're still coming back to haunt me. The storm moisture's going down. We need rain. We need rain. What's going... <laughs>